so I'm uh, Neil Sofer, principal engineer working on Mobile Storage. Hi, I'm Vojta and I'm a developer uh, also in Red Hat also working on Ovid Storage. Uh, so today we'll talk about uh, supporting 4K drive in Ovid. First we'll understand why we need to support this and then we'll dive into the challenges of trying to support 4K in legacy uh, project that was started more than 10 years ago. And we'll focus on the interesting, uh, the interesting point of detecting block size of uh, the storage and how VDSM is using it to, uh, to create storage domain and how engine is using what VDSM reports to manage hosts that have different capabilities. And uh, finally, we'll look at some troubleshooting uh, tips and we'll see, uh, hopefully we can see a live demo creating fork storage. So first, what do I mean by fork storage? Uh, drives has, have uh, minimal block size that you can write to them. You cannot write three bytes to a drive. You can write only one block. And this used to be 512 bytes. And in modern drives, it uh, can be 4K or you can have software-defined storage that wants to use 4K. So the main reason we need 4K is for i, which is Red Hat Hyperconverge infrastructure, which is hyperconverged solution with OSED engine, with Gluster, and with VDO, which is kind of complex, but to create simple solution, you need complex software behind it. So why do we need this? It means that you can take a few uh, chip servers with some chip disks and create together a data center using the, the servers both as compute nodes and as storage. And you don't need to pay a lot of money to storage vendor for storage. Everything is built in. And people really like this uh, idea. Now, what is video and why, how is it related to 4K? Video is a new uh, did application and compression solution for Linux. It can give you 10 times the storage space with the same hardware. So it's really nice that uh, we can use this. And Glasser solution wants to use video. Now video is designed to use uh, 4K blocks. Everything is designed for 4K. It can work with it can emulate uh, storage with uh, 512 bytes sector size, but it makes it uh, slower. So Gluster guys want to use video in the way that it was designed to use. And of course, some users uh, bought uh, newer drives. Newer drives can be cheaper and faster if they are 4K drives. And we want to support these users. So if you have 4K drives, currently with file storage, you can, use, you can use these drives. And we don't use all type of, we don't support all type of storage for 4K. For example, in block storage, we don't support it yet. But we made all the, the infrastructure work so we can support it soon. So what are the challenges? Yes? Uh, do you mean 4K Yes. Say 4K yes. Okay. Yes. So, what are the challenges of adding 4K support in in the system? When it was created, uh, like more than 10 years ago, nobody thought that it's important uh, detail. Uh, so, one small issue: storage format assumes that the block size is 512. So actually, we assume that we can write 512 bytes to a certain location on storage from different hosts in the same time. And this can really does not, cannot work with 4K storage because the minimal block size is 4K. So to mitigate this, we introduced a new storage format, V5. And the main, the main advantage of this format, or actually the main reason it exists, is supporting 4K. And 
The difference is that we change the storage layout so it can work with any kind of drive. And we use the same layout for 4K and 512. So supporting it should be much easier. You do not care about the type of storage. The layout is always the same. So the next issue, we have storage format supporting 4K, which was, by the way, available in 4.3. So everyone running 4.3 is using uh, V5. But Sunlock cannot detect the block size of file storage. So Sunlock can detect the block size with block storage, of course. It's very easy. But for file storage, there is no API to detect the block size. So Sunlock cannot detect it, and it was, uh, was falling back to the old block size, which cannot work, of course. And even if Sunlock could detect the block size, it's not enough, because VDSM and Sunlock must be synchronized. When you create a storage domain, VDSM creates a storage domain before Sunlock is used. So really, VDSM should uh, detect the block size and tell Sunlock which block size to use. So the solution was to add uh, 4K API to Sunlock. Sunlock can be instructed now to use certain block size or certain alignment, which is also related to the block size. So for example, when we initialize a lock space, we can tell Sunlock that we want to use uh, one megabyte alignment and 4K sector. So now we can support any combinations and videos and Sunlock are synchronized. And this was also available in 4.3. So anyone running 4.3 has new Sunlock with these capabilities. So the next issue, we have Sunlock is ready, storage format is ready, but we have tons of code with hard-coded block size. Everywhere, block size was hard-coded to 512. And there are two issues here. The first issue, VDSM should not care about block size most of the time. Most of the code does not care about it. It cares only about size of volume, size of uh, metadata files, the only place that should care about block size is the, the code writing to storage or reading for storage. And this code should use the, the real block size and cannot use hard-coded hard value. So the solution was very simple. Moving to bytes or in more details, changing or sending hundreds of patches, changing all the APIs in VDSM to use bytes, all the internal APIs. And now VDSM is sector free. There is no code using the sector size, only the code writing or reading for storage, which is only a few places. And we can see an example of internal VDSM API. This was, was called set size in the past. And it got size in sectors, outcoded to 512, and wrote this to the storage metadata. And now it calls set capacity, it accepts capacity in bytes, and writing new key to, to the metadata. So now everywhere in VDSM you will not find size, you will find capacity, which matches other places in the VDSM that use this value. This name is also used by Libvirt. So now the system is more coherent. So the next issue, how do you detect block size when there is no API? Well, we find that we can do this. We read QMO code, and in QMO we find that QMO knows how to detect the block size by accessing the storage. Uh, now, we will more talk more uh, about this later. It's a little complicated. But we solved this issue. We can detect the block size. But, of course, we don't have good tests in VDSM because testing was not popular probably when they started this project. And project, big project written in Python with poor test is not something that you want to, to change because when you change something here, something there breaks. This is life. So we improved test coverage. Currently storage code is the best coverage in VDSM. 
it used to be almost zero, and now it's the most tested part of EDSM. And we also are testing real storage domain and real volumes in VDSM. So we, we don't test fakes, we don't use fakes and mocks. We use, uh, we create real storage domain in local FS and in block storage. Like we, we have infrastructure <coughs> like this uh, TMP repo, which is test infrastructure that you can easily use in the test to create a local FS domain. We have similar infrastructure to create a block uh, domain using real LVs on loop devices, so you don't need server. And in a few seconds, you can run many tests using real domain, creating volumes, creating domain, making changes, and make sure that everything works. And this is another infrastructure. We have a user domain feature that creates for you everything. You just use this object, it will create a storage domain for you. And then you can start creating volumes and making changes to this, these volumes. Uh, before we made these changes, we took a picture of VDSM. So this is VDSM before. And this is VDSM now, much better. So VDSM was ready. Are we done? No, because it turns out that QMO is not really ready for 4K. Like it works for most cases, but not for the case we care about, like Blaster with XFS. So the solution was to fix it. We went to QMO source, find the issue, send some patches, and now QMO can detect uh, block size in a better way. And in the case it cannot detect block size, it falls back to a safe value, which works. And the last issue, after everything was ready, we found that we cannot boot a VM with 4K block size. So if you, first we found that if you boot a VM on a 4K domain, the VM thinks that this is a regular storage with 512 bytes sector size. And we learned that we can configure Livvirt to use the correct block size. And then we found that the VM will not boot. Well, it turns out that BIOS does not support booting for 4K. So the solution was not to use it. So what we have now is uh, 4K storage. QMO knows about the storage size, but the VM thinks that this is an uh, old, old drive with 512 uh, sequel size. So this is basically what the solution that we can provide now. The guest think that this is 512 logical block size. QMO know the real size. QMO can do efficient I.O. to the storage. And if the guest is trying to write uh, something less than a complete block, QMO will do emulsion, which is not very fast. But actually, we don't have any data yet on if it's better than what we had before or not. But this is what we can do now. So how do, how do we detect the block size, which is the interesting part? First, let's see how QMA does it after we fix it. So this was actually the fix. We start with reading one byte with direct IO. This will obviously fail, because direct IO cannot read one byte. Now, if it does not fail, it means that we cannot detect the block size, which is the case with, for example, empty file on XFS, because XFS is probably doing some tricks to avoid I.O. if you try to read, if the file is empty, right? Why go to storage? So in this case, QMO will fall back to 4K, which is safe. <coughs> and if it failed, we know that we can try the next value. The next value <coughs> is 512. And if it succeeded, we know the correct block size. And if not, we try the next value, and either we found the value or we failed, and in this case, QM will, will fail the operation. Because you cannot use direct IO with this drive. So the issue with this is that QMO cannot detect block size on an empty image. 
So Kiyomo image create was changed to always allocate the first sector. So this issue should not be, should be solved. And this is also available in 4.3, in, in RHEL, in the version that we acquire. And the next issue is, of course, NFS. We cannot detect the box size on NFS. In this case, QMO fall back to 4K, which works, and even seem to, be, to work faster, although it can cause uh, some uh, unwanted um, changes, un unwanted alignment changes, but it seems to work better. So how do we do it in VDSM? We do it in a similar way, but a better way that QMO cannot use because QMO is checking the image file. In VDSM, we create a temporary file. And now we can use a better way within write instead of read. And we use the same logic. We try to add one byte, and then 512, and then 4K. But in this case, we always detect the block size. So there is no issue with Gluster or XFS. And of course, with NFS, we cannot detect because NFS does not have any requirements. NFS does not really do direct I.O. When you, when you have file open for direct I.O. Uh, there were some issues with Gluster. I did not add them to the presentation, but we had a lot of issues with, with Gluster. Gluster is, is a very creative storage. You have to ask for direct I.O., and then you have to there is another settings like, really, I want, really want direct I.O. And if you use both, you will get direct I.O. and everything works. And if not, Gluster can um, avoid doing direct I.O. in some cases and detection may fail. And some operation may fail later. So, but if Gluster is configured correctly, and this is the default configuration that uh, you should get with Ovirt, then everything should work. So Voita will continue to explain how do we use all this information. Okay, thanks, Nair. Uh, I would like to show you how you, I, we use all this stuff in VDSM. So before trying to use even 4K storage in a VDSM, you first uh, have to enable it. Luckily, uh, in recent versions, this is uh, enabled by default. But uh, if uh, you, by any, for any reason, run uh, older versions, you have to enable it manually in vdsm.conf.de slash gluster.conf, and you have to set enable 4K storage to true. Uh, as I said, in uh, recent versions, it's enabled by default, but it's useful to know this option if you have any issues or for any reason don't want 4K support, you can easily disable it by turning uh, this option off. Uh, first uh, basic functionality which VDSM provides is host capabilities. It's, it reports uh, uh, <clears throat> the capabilities of each storage domain time for a given host, what is able to support. And it will, as I will show you, it will be later on used by engine, this information. Uh, if you check the logs, uh, you can see the values, but uh, uh, in a, also in terms of code, which is more readable, I show it here. Of course, we uh, uh, support 512, 4K, but there is also block size auto. In the logs, uh, you will see it as block size equal to zero. And it means what name suggests, that if you request block size equal zero, you are requesting VDSM to detect the block size automatically. Uh, and uh, why we do not need it, uh, I will also uh, show it later, but for now, I will just mention that we do the story, uh, block size detection in any way because we are good guys and we, exp we expose uh, uh, the block size in our API, so we validate uh, the user input. So if you request any block size, VDSM will do the uh, detection of the block size and will validate if the requested block size is valid. And if not, it will throw this exception. I will 
uh, return back to this exception later on because uh, it uh, can sometimes in some setups can be of an issue. And uh, but there's more. If you read uh, VDSM code before sleeping, as many of you probably do. do you maybe notice that there is even one more constant, block size and n, which is equal to one. And uh, this is uh, for a case, uh, this is just internal VDSM constant, which is for used for cases when we cannot detect the block size. As Neil said, it's, for example, in case of NFS, we are not able to detect the block size of underlying storage. What we do in such cases, we just uh, use uh, requested block size uh, without any validation if there is any such request and if uh, the request is to detect the block size automatically we fall back to 512 bytes just for keeping backward compatibility uh, in the previous versions uh, the alignment and block size were fixed constant hard coded in the code so there were, were, was no question about what the alignment is. But when uh, we now can change the block size, we need to uh, compute the alignment. And the alignment is determined beside block size by maximum number of hosts, which is configurable parameter for uh, storages with uh, 512 bytes we still use the old constant of 2,000 nodes, but uh, to have uh, the alignment of one megabyte also for 4K storage. So for 4K storage, we now use the default of uh, 250 nodes. So if you are going to use uh, 4K storage and you are going to use more than uh, 250 hosts, you need to configure maximum number of hosts on your setup. And once we compute the alignment, we store it into the metadata. As Nir already mentioned, we <coughs> requested because of that new metadata format because we need to store uh, block size and alignment. And here's an example of uh, the metadata, we basically store the alignment and block size into storage domain metadata. So let me briefly recap what, uh, what is the VDFM flow when you create storage domain. And this is roughly what you will see in VDSM logs if you will be investigating what's happening there. First, we detect the block size of underlying storage. Then we validate the requested uh, size. Uh, if everything is OK, we compute the alignment. Now we are ready to store everything into the metadata. Then we create the directory structure as usual. And then we pass uh, the alignment and block size to Sunlock and initialize uh, Sunlock. So let's take a look uh, how it works from engine point of view, which manage, manages all the flows and hosts. First thing engine will do is uh, host activation. And during host activation, it will request VDSM uh, about uh, host capabilities and will store uh, what uh, given host uh, uh, supports or which block sizes for given storage domain it supports into the database. Uh, this is needed because when you create a storage domain, uh, uh, engine will check if all the hosts uh, support auto detection of the block size. And uh, this is needed because uh, we actually right now doesn't allow users to uh, request or specify the block size of storage domain and engine always requests VDSM to detect the block size so it basically asks uh, uh, VDSM to create the storage domain with block size equal, equal zero which stands for, for the auto detection uh, and let VDSM create a storage domain. And once it's created, it requests VDSM again about information uh, of newly created storage domain. 
and from information uh, returned from VDSM, it uh, find out what is the actual uh, block size of the storage domain and stores, stores it into the DB. Okay, what happens if any of the host doesn't support uh, auto detection? In such cases, we fall back to old behavior and uh, we'll, we will request, we will skip uh, the uh, auto detection and will request directly create storage domain with uh, 512 bytes. So if it happens to you that you have a couple of hosts with uh, new VDSM, but there is some old host, uh, host with old VDSM which doesn't support auto detection and you will try to create a storage domain on 4K, it will fail because uh, it will request, uh, engine will request creating of storage domain with 512 bytes and VDSM will detect uh, the, uh, that the actual storage is actually 4K and you will end up with following exception. So if you can remember this exception because at least in the past it was uh, the main source of confusion when people try to use it and it basically means that oh, one of your hosts doesn't support auto detection and you, in the best case, should upgrade to the uh, recent VDSM version. If not, if this is not possible. You have to, add, you had to have to at least uh, enable it manually. So this uh, leads me to the troubleshooting section where, where I'd like to give you some hints what to do if uh, something goes wrong when you are creating storage domain. So here is a couple of questions you can ask yourself uh, during the process. So first, I would really suggest to check if all hosts support auto detection. You can check it easily by calling VDSM uh, client host get capabilities and you should see that it supports auto detection and also 4K, for example, in case of Gluster. And then you, sh you should check if uh, the storage domain metadata is correct. Basically, on case of uh, Gluster, which is file-based, uh, you can just cut the file, check that the metadata version is number five, and uh, block size is what you requested. If this is okay, uh, you can check if uh, the engine really asks the VDSM to detect the block size. So you can grab the VDSM log for create a storage domain command and check that the block size is equal to zero. If this is true, you can check what uh, VDSM actually detected. For this, you need to enable debug level and uh, uh, you should check that, uh, that VDSM really detected the block size of 4K. If everything is okay, it's time to check the engine part and first, uh, you can check if the engineer recorded correctly the host capabilities. The output should be very similar to what uh, you saw when I showed you uh, uh, the VDSM host uh, uh, get capabilities. The uh, same information should be recorded on the engine side in the database and it's stored in uh, VDS table and you should probably select only host you are interested in. And then you should check what uh, engine stored for newly created storage domain. This is uh, again in the database in a table storage domain static and as you can see, you should see the expected block size there. So this is roughly all and now the funny part, I'm really sorry Originally, we intended to do the presentation from my laptop as I have prepared demo here, but I have some issues with graphics. But uh, thanks to the chairman, I was able at least to boot to graphical mode. So we will try to connect no now my laptop, and if we succeed, I can show you short demo. Do you show the movie? Okay, so maybe we can show, show uh, before the talk, I did a recording of the demo, so we can show you the, show you the recording of the demo. 
uh, instead of the live demo, because anyway, we are slowly running out of the time, so it would be easy to run the recording of the demo. So j just a minute, I will copy to, to the USB. So here you can see uh, uh, it's uh, roughly goes uh, through the same commands I show you in troubleshooting. So here we call host get capabilities, and now you can see that, for example, Gluster supports uh, 4K and auto detection, the same for local FS, while NFS doesn't support it. Now we create, try to create a new domain. From a user point of view, there's nothing changed. You just try to create a new domain as usual, and uh, there's, uh, there's any change in the UI. So it just uh, sh show, uh, should uh, show that it works in, uh, on also on 4K storage. So now uh, I will grab the uh, VDSM log to check that the engine really uh, queried uh, VDSM to detect the block size. Yeah, and it's here, the block size equals zero. So the uh, engine asked the uh, VDSM to detect the block size. And uh, now let's see what VDSM actually detected. It, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, and it follows, uh, you need to, to enable debug log for this, and here you can see what Nero spoke about, that we fr first try to work one byte, then 512, and then 4K, and finally find out that the block size of the storage is 4K. So in the meantime, the new storage domain was successfully created, and we can check uh, uh, the engine database, what it stores there, as, and here as you can see similar output to VDSM get capabilities for Gluster. It supports 4K and auto detection, and uh, we also checked that newly uh, created uh, domain storage domain has correct block size and it's 4K. So uh, in this case, everything worked fine and we are happy and have a new storage domain with 4K block size. So I think that's all. Thanks uh, for your attentions and are there any questions? So the question is if we can use 4K without Gluster. Yes, well, uh, you can use it with local FS storage. It was available, uh, I think, in 4, 3, 6, or 5, or something like this. And on NFS, we cannot use it. We always fall back to 512 because there are no requirements. And on block storage, it's not enabled yet. Like we have all the infrastructure, the storage domain format. All the code is ready. We just need to fix the few parts that access block storage to use the actual block storage size. And of course, get the, the block size from the storage. In this case, there's no need to detect. We just read some values in CCFS and we have everything. Any other question? The environment must be homogeneous, so you can't mix 512 with 4K, right? 
the question is if the environment has to be homogeneous or if we can mix 4K with 512. Uh, you, you can mix. You can have different kind of storage in environment. Uh, 4K and 512 doesn't matter. But all the hosts, if you have 4K domain, you need all the hosts must run newer enough version to use the storage because in Ovid, all the hosts are connected to all storage. So in one DC, all the hosts should have the capability. And then you can create 4K domain on one with one storage and on another storage, 512 domain. So each domain is homogeneous? Yes, domain must be homogeneous. You cannot uh, mix uh, block sizes. Any more questions? If no, thanks for your attention again.